So, I know that quite a few times now I've mentioned that the Flood and Chaos are very, very similar. This video, instead of being a power scaling video like the last few videos, I'm going to be discussing them as if they are narrative elements from an outside of universe perspective. Treat this video kind of like a retrospective, where I ramble for 15-ish minutes about how these factions really can't be compared, despite already having made multiple videos on this topic and having no plans to stop. I really just enjoy making stupid shit like this. So, to kick us off, we have to look at what the Flood, the Tyranids, as well as Chaos are from an out-of-story perspective. In order to have a faction that really defines the setting, you have to build the setting around that one faction's mythology. I know with Halo, the precursors were shoehorned in, somewhere between Halo CE and Halo 3, but the later titles all loosely base their entire canon or mythology off the Flood and the precursors. Hell, the three best Halo books in my opinion are when Greg Bear dropped the Forerunner trilogy and I got my first real hit of interdimensional space cocaine. Only after these books did the real mythology of the setting come to be. In 40k, the entirety of the setting can be explained by, we looked into this Sea of Souls thing, and the Sea of Souls looked back, with this Sea of Souls, or Chaos, being the current defining event or series of events. If the Tyranids showed up without Chaos being an issue, it would be nothing more than a great campaign, something akin to one of the campaigns during the Great Crusade. In 40k, the mythology revolves around these weird psychic frogs named the Old Ones. They fill a similar role to the Flood or the Precursors in this aspect, and that is why I brought up the Tyranids at all in this first part. They are brought into the setting way too late for them to be such a fundamental part of the lore. We hear a lot about the strength of the Tyranid hive mind, but we don't have mythology based around them. We don't have rumors of them being greater deities or them waging great wars against their creators. And that's what largely separates the Tyranids from the Flood, and the Old Ones in this case. The Nids are part of the setting, while Chaos and Flood are the respective foundations of their games. Modern Halo and modern 40k would not be what they are today without such foundations already being set. Also, funnily enough, while writing this script, we get to see another great comparison between Halo and 40k, with the quote-unquote setting of the entire series undergoing massive reworks. For Halo, it was the Forerunners and the Precursors replacing the previous story that was going to be Ancient Humans. But for 40k, it was a real focus on the warp, and they doubled down on it. Here's what I mean by that. In the original Rogue Trader, or first edition as the zoomers would say, chaos wasn't this fundamental piece that it is today. Chaos in early 40k was another faction, just like the Tyranids. And actually, that's a really decent comparison. It was a massive threat to everyone, but it wasn't what defined the setting. The modern Tyranids in 10th edition really fit into that first edition group so well, because in early 40k, a lot of the quote-unquote power scaling that modern 40k has just didn't exist. Another theme that both universes have, and it's pretty ham-fisted, is hubris. And with 40k, we know that Magnus did everything wrong, in Halo, Mendicant Bias did everything wrong. Or maybe it was the Didact, or the Master Builder. That's another similarity I just put together. Neither universe has a main character, quote-unquote. Yeah, I know characters like the Emperor and the Master Chief exist, but each universe has such a complex cast of main characters that it could be anyone. Hell, Garviel Loken was the main character of the Horus Heresy, and he's just in Astartes. Granted, he is part of the Mordavald, and he was a badass, but he's not even a Primarch. Ferris Manus received less love than Garvey over here. But putting the train back on the rails of Hubris, Halo is based around a species thinking that they're too big to fail, and watching that species slowly fall into decadence. 40k is a bunch of species doing really sinful shit, mainly the Eldari, but I really can't imagine that there wasn't a species or two that didn't like a little bit of roleplay. This depravity reached a point where the elves literally screwed themselves so hard they got sent straight to horny jail. We can really see this theme of hubris in the mythology. Now, despite the old ones filling a very, very similar role to that of the precursors, they sadly just don't even compare to the power of the precursors from the Halo series of books. I would even go as far as to say the old ones wouldn't even be able to beat the Tyranids. Even still, the bugs would get swept aside like no problem to the omniscient bug people of Halo, but that's, I, I said no power scaling. Now that the precursors are the Flood, we get a quote-unquote corrupted version of the gods of old. We get a more sinister god, or gods that seek to punish all those that deny them their due vengeance. Go check out that previously mentioned video for more on the precursors and the Tyranid Hive Mind if 
you want to know more. Shameless plug out of the way, let's first look at the aspects of the Flood that represent the different Chaos Gods. Corn is a pretty obvious one, and the Flood use 100% of the strength available to whatever muscles or biomass that they have. And on that note, we have to explain this because it's a thing that both hive minds have in common, and I only now realize most of this series is just the Flood versus the entirety of 40k. Both hive minds do not care about preserving any of the life under their control. A normal person will not use 100% of their actual muscles capacity, since moving your couch isn't worth rearranging your already fucked up anatomy. A normal human will use between 15 and 30 percent of their muscles true strength at any given time. There are people who can train to get a higher than average, but almost never do you see people lifting a super heavy object and then watching their arm explode like a can of hot ravioli hitting pavement. Also, a not too often mentioned aspect of corn is self-improvement. The Flood loves to self-improve. With corn, it's the growing of your skills as a warrior, since that usually coincides with you collecting more skulls for the Skull Throne. The Flood, conversely, want more consciousness so that way their intellect can expand. On to Nurgle. It's honestly the simplest of the connections. Um, both fucking stink. And both really like it when things should be dead, and they just aren't. Also on a poetic note, Nurgle represents a lot of the aspects of life, and the continuation of new species, new ecosystems, and life continuing. Flood, before they were quote-unquote corrupted, created life on a whim, and seek to improve and spread their seed all throughout the stars. Also, spores. And often being seen as an older, well-spoken gentleman, with the grave mind sounding like an old museum curator, and Nurgle allegedly sounds like a happy grandfather. Moving over to the Bird Boy, we know that they have advanced arcane technology that borders on sorcery, and they keep secrets, and much like Zinch, they make temporary alliances when they need to further their goals. For Slanesh, I could go with the easy answer of holes and tentacles, but I think a better example is how the Flood can physically vibrate the brains of select individuals, and if that doesn't sound like a noise marine's wet dream, I really don't know what is. Moving away from the similarities with the gods, we know for certain that there are dozens of different bioforms of the Flood, and how they have different levels of intelligence and strength. Similar to how each Chaos God has different champions and demons depending on whatever job they need done or target dealt with in one way or another. With demons, they don't fear losing their lives in the material realm because, as a rule, they just get sent back to the warp to regenerate. I know there are ways to permanently rend a demon's soul, but that is the exception and not the rule. The Flood treats its own bioforms in a very similar way since they are all one or a few precursors just making matter move through neural physics. For a short guy, I probably shouldn't stretch this hard, but I want to compare how the Flood consciousness physically pulled the Forerunner Super AI, the previously mentioned Mendicant Bias, out of reality to corrupt it to its cause. Much how a Chaos God can open a portal to corrupt a mortal who, you know, would make a fine pawn, or just tap directly into their skull. Another similarity between the Chaos Gods and the Flood is how every single action takes place over vast swaths of time, sometimes waiting eons for a single piece to fall into play, with its seed being planted in long forgotten history. Yet, time and time again, in both universes, foolish mortals always end up receiving the short end of the metaphorical stick. Back down to a proper stretch to height ratio, the Floods are absolute masters of travel on an intergalactic scale, and even an inter-universal scale, far faster than light. They use portals, much like in 40k, but they don't use the warp. They use the Halo analog, which is Slip Space. Slip Space sadly doesn't have demons, so they don't have to develop Geller Fields, definitely not hinting at a future video. The Flood is inevitable, much like Chaos. The Flood, for all intents and purposes, has always existed. Much like the Eldar giving birth to Slanesh due to their debauchery and inserting everything possible into everything possible, I'll let your imagination run with that one. The Flood, on a different side of the same coin, was quote-unquote birth when the Forerunners were too proud and arrogant to accept that anyone other than them could be chosen to handle the mantle of responsibility. While the Forerunners really like to portray themselves as this noble race in their pursuit of the mantle of responsibility, keep in mind that they brutally subjugated all who did not respect their authority 
and even wiped out the humans near completely for their perceived transgressions. Very similar to the Eldari and the Drukari. I'll end it with my favorite part, the sci-fi trope of humanity having to fix everything, and in Halo they are chosen by God, but that's neither here nor there. In 40k, humans rise just as the Eldar really fumble and chaos truly awakens with the birth of Slanesh, the Eye of Terror opened, and the Sea of Souls as they knew it just stopped existing. Humanity in 40k is left to fight every single threat in the galaxy, and somehow through sheer grit, plot armor, and attrition, humanity fights near impossible odds. While in Halo, humanity is left to fix the mistakes of the prideful forerunners who shattered their gods and created metaphorical chaos in the galaxy, as to the literal chaos that we see in 40k. Also, both series really like to use demons and other religious terms in ironic and unironic points. If the Flood ever ended up actually turning to chaos, it would just be a super boring story, as the entire galaxy would just become one single super sentient chaos and that's lame and more importantly that doesn't sell halo games and it most certainly doesn't sell primaris miniatures 